has the smell of medications and disinfectants. Even though I was feeling really, really weak, I was made to walk around the bed. Also, they gave me a little diagram of how I should clean myself. Here's something I never thought I'd be saying. I had surgery in Switzerland. Today, I'd like to share with you my experience of having an operation and staying in a Swiss hospital. I sincerely hope that none of this information will ever be useful for you, but here we go. Let's start with the most common question that I received recently, which is, oh my God, what happened, Erica? To cut the long story short, we went skiing in Gstaad and I fell on an icy slope and I knew that something was really wrong because as I was falling, I heard this noise, which was like click, click in my knee and it really, really hurt. So that's what happened, unfortunately. I know that every situation is different, but still I'd like to go through the timeline of events from my accident to the surgery so that you can have some sort of understanding of how long things could take here in the Swiss healthcare system. So the accident happened on 20th of March and I was taken to the local hospital where they did some initial assessment and an x-ray and since they saw that I had no broken bones I was just sent home with a care package of drugs, some crutches and a knee brace. I was told that I need to schedule in a GP appointment within the first week after the accident. So on 25th of March I had the first family doctor's appointment where I was told that I need to have an MRI scan and unfortunately there was quite a long wait for it here in Nüstel but there was another facility in a town nearby and we managed to get an appointment for in two weeks time. And whilst I was waiting for an MRI I had another GP appointment just to check how everything was going and also I started physio which I was doing every week up until the day of my surgery. After my scan on the 8th of March I had another GP appointment where I was basically told that my AC ACL ligament is torn and I will most probably need the surgery. A week and a half later I had an appointment with a knee specialist where indeed he confirmed that there is an option for me to have a surgery and when I asked him when that could be he said oh we have lots of free time slots available what about next week and I was like okay sure so I agreed to it and signed the consent paperwork there and then. I also had an anesthesiologist appointment and a covid test in the week before the surgery. So in total, it took five and a half weeks between my accident and the surgery. Let me know whether you think that's fast or not. Personally, I'd like to say that when you have an accident like that, that restricts your ability to move, to do things normally, the time perception changes. Now I'm looking at it and it's only five and a half weeks, but in the moment it felt like much longer, especially at the start when we didn't really know what exactly was wrong in my knee. It seemed like the time was just dragging, whereas as soon as we had the diagnosis, everything moved on so much faster. Now I'd like to talk about my surgery and hospital experience. Due to the current situation, there are some COVID measures in place. In order to be admitted into the hospital, I had to have a COVID test before the surgery and that was done right at the hospital. I was surprised I didn't have to go to any other testing place and I was also told that the COVID test costs would be covered through my health insurance. At the moment no visitations are allowed in the hospital unless it's an exception. Also what's interesting is that after the surgery well, now I was in my room, I was told that I don't have to wear a mask if I don't want to. Let's talk about my hospital room. So as soon as I arrived at the hospital, I was taking up to the room where I'd be staying after my surgery and I was going to stay there for a minimum of three days. Just to let you know, I don't have any special hospital insurance, but that exists here in Switzerland. You can get it additionally. I just have a box standard basic and accident insurance. And this is the kind of room that you get with that. The hospital room was very nice. It was quite modern. There was a bathroom with two sinks in it and also there was a big window and a TV. The room was meant to be for two people but the whole time it was just me there and I asked the nurse about it and she basically said that I got a VIP room and I was like I hope not because I can't afford that. About the hospital itself, although parts of the building are actually quite old from the outside, inside it's all redone, it's quite modern. For example on the floor where I'm staying there's this big lobby waiting area that looks more like a hotel lobby rather than a waiting area in a hospital. There's even an espresso vending machine and huge floor to ceiling windows. What surprised me the most is that the hospital here doesn't actually smell like hospital. What I'm used to back in Latvia is that as soon as you go into any polyclinic or any 
hospital or a doctor's office, it has the smell of medications and disinfectants and a bit of ill people as well. But here it literally didn't smell of anything. I have no idea how they achieved that. Maybe they have really, really good ventilation system. So moving on to the actual surgery, what I had was an ACL reconstruction using a graft from my own shin. The surgery lasted for an hour and a half. It was done laparoscopically, but I also had an open cut for where they were harvesting the graft. According to the nurses and the surgeon, my operation went well. I did feel really weak and very lightheaded the whole day, but I wasn't in too much pain. In a way, I can say that I'm quite lucky because the hospital here in Nushtel actually specializes in orthopedic surgery. And since ACL tears are quite common here, everyone does a lot of active sports. My surgeon's every second operation is this operation. So he's had quite a lot of practice. So obviously, as soon as the surgery is over, you are in the recovery stage. In my situation, I would say that this process of recovery is actually very active rather than passive. Already on the first day, I had my first physio and even though I was feeling really, really weak, I was made to walk around the bed and also I was given a little booklet with exercises that I had to do every day and I'm still doing them. Also, they told me that I need to schedule in my physio appointment for after the surgery and they made sure that I do that before I leave the hospital. I was mostly taken care of by numerous nurses and support staff, which are all really, really nice. Some of them were more chatty than others. On the first day I was checked probably every two hours. They checked my blood pressure, my temperature, my dressing. They also asked about my pain levels. And after I survived the first night, there were a lot less checks and they just kind of let me be. In terms of pain medication, I think it's quite strictly regulated here in Switzerland. So as a default, you only get ibuprofen and paracetamol. However, if you're in a lot of pain, you can ask for something stronger. Luckily, I didn't need that. But let's move on to a more fun topic, which is food. And seemingly all of my friends and my family wanted to know what I was fed at the hospital here. As soon as I arrived at the hospital, they seemed to want to know what I'd like for breakfast the next day. And they had quite a lot of options. They had some breads and croissants and pastries and yogurts, birch and muesli, fruit, juices, all sorts. At the time, I didn't really care about the food, so I just picked some options at random. And I really wish I thought it through a bit more carefully because you get the same breakfast every day. For lunch and dinner options, I got this little menu where you could pick between different starters and desserts and I think breads, but you get the same main. I would say that the food is fairly traditional. I had meats and fish of different kinds, but they did tell me that if I had some special dietary requirements, I could tell them and they can make something up. What was funny is that if they had a chance to name something really, really fancy, they did. For example, one of the desserts was called Farandole de fruits exotiques en gratin de sabayon. Everything was served in a really chefy manner. You kind of felt a bit like you were in a restaurant. Overall, the food tasted fine. It was not bad, but not amazing. And some things were more tasty than others. So now let's talk about leaving the hospital. I arrived for my surgery on Thursday and I was discharged on Saturday. I was essentially told if I don't feel well, I can stay for as long as needed. And it was funny because the nurses and the doctor both joked that if I liked the dinner option, for example, for the day I was meant to leave, I could just stay until dinner. <laughs> just to have that dinner, but I didn't, I just left after lunch. So essentially there was absolutely no pressure to kick me out of the hospital. So before leaving the hospital, I received all the paperwork that's needed for my future physio sessions. I also got prescriptions for various drugs. And also I saw my surgeon again on Saturday, which I was a bit surprised about. After this experience, I have a few general interesting observations that I'd like to share with you. First one is about the language. All the conversations I had with doctors and nurses and all the staff at the hospital was all in French. All the forms that I received and had to fill in and sign, everything was in French. I'm not really sure how it works if you don't actually speak French at all or not really well, but I think most doctors will speak some English and I think some nurses will also speak some English, so maybe they can explain things to you in English, but I'm really not sure how it would work. The second interesting observation is about punctuality. As you might know, Swiss are crazy with being on time. You just need to look at Swiss transports and you'll get what I mean. But seemingly, this rule does not apply to Swiss hospitals because all of the doctor's appointments I've ever had here and also for the surgery were always late. And my dressing changes, for example, for my length were always late as well. And I don't know why it is like that, but it really surprised me. 
The third interesting observation is that mistakes are often made. Knowing how organized the Swiss normally are, I was very surprised that there were quite a few mistakes that happened throughout the whole process for me. For example, at some point in the hospital, my address <laughs> changed. So I didn't receive some of the correspondence that they sent me because they got the house number wrong. Also, I'm pretty sure they got my email address wrong because I never received the results of my COVID test. I only received a letter and I only got it when I came back home after the surgery. So bear in mind that you should always double check everything, even in Switzerland. Next interesting observation is that in true Swiss fashion, they give you very detailed instructions. In preparation for my surgery, I got many different forms with instructions of what I should do the day before my surgery. Also, they gave me a little diagram of where I should wash myself and how I should clean myself, which was really, really bizarre. I also had to call in to find out what time I need to come in for my surgery. And uh, the instructions for that were really, really specific as well. It basically said like, I will call on this time, on this day to this number and I felt like I was treated like a child being given very detailed instructions. The next interesting thing is that during all of my different doctor's appointments I never felt rushed and I felt that I could ask any questions that I had and that feels very different to what I've experienced in UK where for example if I went for an appointment with my GP it was super 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 stressful because you knew that you only had 10 minutes and everything felt really really rushed whereas here it's much more relaxed. Overall, I would say that I had a really positive experience with my operation and the hospital stay here in Switzerland. And maybe I can even now see why we pay so much for the health insurance here. If you have any experience with the Swiss healthcare system, make sure to share it in the comments down below. I'd like to also say that I have a couple of videos planned to continue on this topic. In one of them, I'll talk about accident insurance, how it works here in Switzerland, and how much it actually costs to have the surgery here. And in another video with Mike, we'll compare the Swiss healthcare system to the UK healthcare system. So stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Bye.